just wetting the canvas now with a little water, adding a little gesso, and now I'm just introducing a little bit of CAD yellow. And I'm slowly transitioning that into a, a bit of a turquoise color that uh, will then slowly transition again to ultramarine blue. And I just want to get this nice and soft and don't need it to be too bold. Um, adding a little sun here. We're going to have a little bitty sun just uh, way in the horizon, uh, kind of lowering down. Uh, this is one of those kind of late in the day, uh, early uh, onset of evening coming. So I let that completely dry and now I'm just uh, dry brushing on some cloud formations. I've mixed uh, purple and um, ultramarine blue, little um, little burnt sienna as well, and uh, created this uh, nice little gray color here. Just making sure it's kind of soft and uh, don't have a whole lot of uh, paint on the brush. And I want to come back through now and I've mixed uh, a nice kind of orangey gold color with my yellow and my orange and a little titanium white and I just want to kind of start to create a little bit of some reflective light uh, casting on on some of these clouds. And I'm just using a small round brush. I'm, I'm kind of paying attention to some detail here. I'm kind of taking my time and really trying to form these clouds to uh, to just get all that, that detail that I really kind of want to use into that. So coming back through here and kind of adding another level of, uh, of highlight, I, I've mixed uh, kind of a, a gold color a bit more on the yellow side now. And I really want to come through here and kind of, uh, especially close to the sun, just kind of make it a little bolder as if it's, it's much closer to that light source now. I'm going to paint my little uh, ocean horizon here. And, uh, and again, I've kind of using that same cloud color. I've added a, a little bit of uh, light uh, ultramarine blue just to lighten that color up a little bit more. But again, it's really just purple and blue, a little brown uh, to create that. And then using that same color, just changing the value a little bit, I've kind of darkened it up. Uh, but um, wanted to create some land formations way off in the distance here. I wanted this sun to kind of begin uh, having a little bit of some sun rays kind of bursting there at, around the sunshine. So really, again, I'm just dry brushing this on uh, and, and uh, kind of skimming it on there. Kind of speeding up the drying time using my, my blow dryer. This is all done in acrylic to begin with. I, I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning, but uh, I'm kind of laying all this in first and foremost with uh, with the acrylic. And I'll go back a little bit later uh, and I'll add my oils in. So I'm um, still using that same kind of land mass color and I wanted to also get that to reflect down into the water now. So I'm just kind of trying to follow the basic shape of the um, of those land masses in the back so that it kind of uh, mirror images it. Then I can come back now and uh, begin to add a little bit of the highlight color, a little bit of those oranges and yellows and golds. Um, we don't need an entire a lot of detail here but uh, just kind of want to give that indication that that these are way off in the distance and uh, with just a few simple brush strokes you can really effectively uh, kind of form that illusion. And then with a side a side kind of vertical stroke or I'm sorry a horizontal stroke um, I'm just kind of laying in a little bit of the choppiness in the water that uh, this light will be reflecting from. go through here with that, that purple uh, blue color that, I, that I've been using uh, for the clouds and for the land. And uh, coming back now, I'm just really wanting to start to bring in more of that choppiness in the water. And I wanted a little boat way here in the background, so I'm just kind of 
first blocking it all in in that dark purple blue color and then going back to add the highlights I'm just lightening up that color with a little more titanium white and um, and really just changing the value a little bit lighter to start to create a little more uh, of some dimension to it creating some of the folds in the fabric of the uh, of the sail and uh, and just kind of laying everything in so pretty pretty basic pretty simple it's certainly nothing I need to put too much time or detail in it's really kind of far off in the distance Get a little reflection here in the water again using that horizontal stroke uh, you want to make sure you're keeping this very level and very flat uh, so that you can give it that impression that the, this is water and water is very flat this is a fairly placid uh, ocean I'm not I'm not doing any large crashing waves uh, or any uh, any violence in the water like that I just kind of want this to be kind of soft and quiet and peaceful as I move kind of closer to the foreground I'm broadening those brush strokes those horizontal brush strokes and that'll help to give that illusion that it's starting to get a little closer now. And then keeping those strokes kind of small in the background will, will give that, that level of distance. Want some more little land masses here in the background. You want to think about the fact that these are kind of on the same plane, so you want to make sure they're using the same colors. Uh, and then as you move forward, uh, kind of getting those darker. Um, so the rule of thumb is usually that uh, things in the distance will typically be cooler tones and softer. Uh, and as they move forward, they get usually warmer and, and bolder. And again, that can help with the illusion of, of distance. All right, so I'm now painted in my large land mass here in the front. Uh, I just used carbon black for that. And now I'm beginning to lay in some of the, uh, the distant trees. I'm just really just scumbling these on really quickly and adding a little bit of uh, more dark uh, shadowing at the, at the base of those to uh, kind of give it that impression that, uh, that there's a lot of shadowing based because of the, uh, the dark canopy uh, of leaves uh, here. Now this is going to, a lot of this will be covered up by, by the chapel we're going to paint in. But now that I've got those in here, I'm taking a little more time and actually adding some detail, uh, some leafing and and some individual leafing uh, in and around the uh, th these tree formations so that uh, we just kind of give that impression that, uh, that there's a there's some individual leafing here going on here some some different branches that are sticking out and uh, just want to get that all kind of worked in really quickly now. So as I move kind of further to the background, it's going to be more of those blue tones, uh, just to give that impression that that's kind of a little bit more distant. And then in the foreground, there's just a little bit more color and detail, and uh, we can kind of work on, on creating that illusion. I'm, at, I'm kind of opening the canopy now with some, some uh, sky tones that are kind of holes through the canopy. And, and of course, adding in some of the tree trunks and branches, kind of get all, all that kind of figured out and worked in really quickly before I really start uh, bringing in some more individual leafing. And uh, now I'm just coming back with a little bit lighter tones of those of those uh, crimson colors here to uh, really begin to form some of the clumps of leaves uh, on, on the forefront of these trees now. And that could just be there to help provide a little bit of form and dimensionality and shape and uh, and give it some a little bit more um, just depth really so it's not quite so flat and this just takes a little bit of time of course I'm using a small 20 over 8 uh, 20 over 0 brush it's a little round brush small little head and I can get some really fine little details here. And uh, I'm just really thinking about uh, my negative space and I'm, I'm making sure that uh, I'm not killing the, the uh, underpainting here. I want some of that to show through. 
and that can really help with, with creating that, that depth and form. And I just find it easier to uh, scoop a, a big mass of that paint on a, on a palette knife so that I can certainly go back pretty quickly and um, not have to worry about uh, going back to my, my palette too often. Kind of work a little quicker now. So I'm going back and adding a little bit more darkness uh, into the, the uh, trees here because uh, I just felt that I didn't get it quite dark enough and that'll help me later on as I, as I begin to add the oil paint. So now that I've uh, kind of blocked in and drawn in the lines for our chapel now and some of the uh, some of the rocks and boulders it's sitting on. I come back here now and I've mixed a, a really dark turquoise. I've used turquoise and I've added a little bit of purple and a little bit of, uh, of uh, burnt umber and that will help to kind of gray it out. And then at the same time I've also kind of created a nice uh, yellow, kind of an Indian yellow uh, with a little bit of purple which is the complement color to yellow and help that to get grayed out as well and that can be all kind of the uh, the side of the the rocks for the uh, the walls of, of this chapel. I wanted to have a very stony little chapel here and and so that's kind of what we're going to be going for. And then of course on the light the right side of the chapel is where the uh, sun uh, light source will be coming and kind of striking the side of, of, of the chapel. So, so that'll of course be just a little bit brighter and I'm using that same Indian yellow color with a little bit of white and uh, mixed a little bit of orange and yellow into that as well to kind of create that, that uh, color there. So first want to kind of get this all kind of gen genuinely blocked in, figure out where the shadows are going to be cast and um, and then once that's kind of all staged, it really can start to really create some form. I'm going back and just adding a few brush strokes and um, making sure that uh, I'm just adding a little bit of extra color, I'm kind of throwing in some greens and some some gray colors, some blues and some purples. I just wanted to kind of create a nice uh, grouping of, of different colors now that are just kind of really just there to, to create a little bit of, of interest for the painting and nothing more. wanted to kind of make this painting quite alive with color and, and I'll do the same with the stones as I move down into the, uh, the cliff region. So I, I had a call come in and I was trying to take this call and, and keep painting at the same time. So I apologize that my hand's kind of in the way as I'm taking this call, but certainly a bad time for the phone to ring. Um, but so, so I, I apologize for that. But now I'm just coming back and adding some of the shadowing under the, uh, the eaves uh, of the uh, roof. And, uh, and then I'm just coming back again into the shadow region. I wanted to kind of lighten it up, adding some more grays and some more blues. Um, that way the stones, as I bring those in, will, will show forth a whole lot better. And uh, now we've got some of these windows. I wanted some of the windows to be kind of um, casting a little bit of, of glow from, from inside. And, uh, and so a few of these from, from the chapel um, will, be, will be kind of showing through. And I've just mixed together crimson and, and a little bit of... Uh, of orange to to begin uh, creating that that little glow there in, in the windows, and now it's just kind of going back and forth and, and getting my my colors right and and really just kind of uh, just tweaking and improving things. And I want to get this all staged before I, I begin to uh, to create the stones. And I'll be using my my black felt tip pen for that. I've, I've used this in the past. I've talked about it in the past. But uh, these little felt tip pens, uh, so much easier to do this level of detail over just using acrylic paint. Um, and I get more control that way and uh, I can just kind of draw these on. So uh, they work very, this works very well. Uh, for this level of detail. And the, this is so tiny and so fine that it would just take forever to try to do that with, this, with a liner brush. 
And uh, I, I also added that into the, the tiles on the roof, but I'm gonna remove that. I wasn't very happy with the, with the roof after I had added this tile, so I'll, I'll uh, literally, literally just wipe it away. The nice thing is you can take a, a damp paper towel and, and because it's ink, it easily wipes away and then I can just start fresh. But I wanted to go back now and to those stones and just add different color stones. I'm throwing turquoises and blues and some yellows and some some greens, you know, just a whole lot of different colors um, because these stones are not always the same uh, colors. So I've wiped away the, the ink marks on, on the roof now, so now I can just kind of draw those in, those tiles in by hand, which I think uh, I was much happier with when I did it that way. Sometimes it's just a simple matter of trial and error. A lot of times just some trial and error and see if something's going to work or not. And if you're not happy with it, you can easily change that. And that's kind of the wonderful thing about painting. So, so coming back here and kind of just uh, adding some more refinements and some tweaking, just trying to get this kind of where I want it to be. And then we can kind of move on down into the uh, into the cliff region. But uh, that's kind of our little chapel here. It was fairly simple. It was uh, a lot of detail, but um, but easily done more so this way. And uh, now I'm just kind of going back through here and adding a little bit more to the trees before I kind of got started here. Now I'm going to go into the stones, and you're going to see me use a lot of different colors. I'm I'm using a lot of earth tones, but also um, I've really toned down my blues and purples, uh, my browns, my oranges and yellows, and my greens. I'm just going to kind of jump around and adding all these different varieties of color. I really wanted to do something different with my stones and kind of create this uh, rainbow effect. And, and stones are kind of neat. They can come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, colors, and um, and so I really wanted this to be kind of a very very colorful painting and uh, just have a lot of things going on and adding all these these different colors to add some interest uh, to the painting so so it was just a lot of fun to to go through here and I'm being really fairly loose and free really I wanted to keep the brush strokes I'm not trying to blend them in overly. I, I want to have all these different brush strokes that will then become sort of guides for me as I start to form the cracks uh, into, uh, into the stones, some of the pores, the cracks, and just all the imperfections that, that we see uh, in, in stones, rocks, boulders, things of that nature. So I'm just having a lot of fun here, just adding all sorts of varieties for my palette and uh, being really loose and, and kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm not being really tight about how I'm painting this in. I'll, I'll bring in the, the detail later and I'll kind of tighten up a little bit more as I, as I start to refine and bring in uh, more of the highlights, colors into the stone and help it to be a little more three-dimensional. So just kind of completing out, uh, we have a little stairwell here uh, that I'm kind of painting in right now that has the same kind of stonework uh, as well on, on this chapel. Um, this chapel, I just I found a, a, a neat chapel online that I thought was real pretty. I have no idea where it was taken, um, but uh, it was a, a neat little photograph and I thought it would make a great subject matter for, for a painting. So uh, I decided to use that, but I certainly took a lot of liberty uh, with with my colors and how I kind of put that together. Um, so now I can continue with, with the stones now. and I'm adding some bushes as well. I wanted to have a little bit of foliage um, kind of between the, the cracks and separations in the stones. And uh, so I'm just kind of drawing that in or painting that in right now. This, this is going to be fairly dark on this side of the painting, so I'm not going to have a lot of highlight. Um, it should be a lot in shadow here off to the left. And now I'm just coming back and adding a little bit more of the, uh, the highlight to those bushes. Kind of mixed together a, a yellow-green that uh, I'm using as my highlight. 
And so continue with my, with my little cliffs now and uh, this will be a little path that's leading down toward the ocean. And then I'll be painting in a pier or a dock that, uh, that that little boat is kind of floating away from. So just uh, really using this underpainting, this dark black blocked in color that uh, I really want to utilize that. Think about your negative space. That helps with your, with your shapes and, and the forms. And just makes this task a whole lot easier doing it that way. So I'm using that felt tip pen and just drawing in some cracks now and in some pores, just making just making a lot of different uh, a lot of different shapes and so forth that uh, to help this to really kind of look more like a stone. And then I can go back now and start slowly adding uh, some highlight colors, going into those same colors and just changing the value a little lighter using titanium white, lightening that up and really starting to add some dimension now to, to these stones, really add some life. And uh, wanted to have a little tree here in the front of the chapel, little, little uh, white leaves, and, and just to um, really help that to kind of stand out, get, provide a little contrast with all that dark that we've got going on there. And uh, you know, contrast is always quite important in my opinion in a painting and, and really adds something uh, unique to a painting if you can have the right amount of contrast with lights and darks. And so just slowly kind of building this up, um, adding more of that cliff um, and uh, some of these boulders here, but really kind of following that same exact pattern, really just uh, watch your negative space, use your underpainting as much as you can. And the, and the colors that I'm adding, I've really not adding a lot of white into that color to opaque it. Uh, uh, I really wanted it to be pretty translucent so that a lot of that underpainting can, can still be seen through the color. And I just think that adds a, an interesting level uh, to the painting. So, so I like to kind of do that, just add pure uh, transparent colors without opaquing it and use your underpainting. And you can get some really neat effects by doing that. All right, so now we're creating more of the wall of the cliff now, this kind of this downward stroke, and that can kind of give that, that level of, of detail and uh, illusion that, this is a, that these are kind of steep uh, cliffs leading down into the water. Let's get this kind of all worked in now and, and continue to uh, really build upon, build the colors, bring in a little more highlights, off to the off to the right think about where your light source is coming from and and uh i'm gonna go back again with my felt tip pen and add those extra cracks and uh and little uh, crevices there into the to the rock and that can kind of help to uh, assist in, in creating that illusion uh, of rocks and boulders adding a little bit more of our shrubbery now um, and just really making sure that there's a lot of imperfection, that you don't want to have the same size stones, you want to have all sorts of variety, and, and nature's full of imperfection, so make sure that nothing matches, make sure that it's all imperfect. You can have a little fence line here, because of course we don't want our little people walking down the stairs from the chapel to, to certainly tumble over the side of a, of a cliff, so we bring in the, the little fence line here, and. Um, and uh, we just about have uh, the cliff complete. We're about ready to move on to uh, bringing in that dock. Um, and then we'll have some, some boulders that we'll put out into the, into the ocean as well and, and kind of have some eye stoppers uh, to help us uh, with, with the general, um, j just the appearance of the painting and, and making sure it has some good eye flow. So I've drawn in our little our little dock now, and, uh, and now I can have a bit of a guide. And I've I've mixed together a, a um, burnt sienna that, with a little white, kind of make it a really light light brown, orange brown color, and then go back with my uh, 
with with my carbon black to create the little the little posts that are that are jetting out of the water here. Pretty simple. There's not a lot to the to the dock, uh, but I want to make sure that I'm adding everything. The light reflecting, even the, having the uh, the shadowing reflecting into the into the water. All those little things that way just doesn't look like it's floating there uh, on nothing. So, um, but but obviously uh, this is going to be forming a lot of uh, a, a lot of reflection in the water and then just taking that pure carbon black and kind of forming extra little stones uh, jutting out of the water and uh, again this this can be used kind of to help with eye flow and to help as a as an eye stopper so that it kind of uh, encompasses all the painting and leads the eye more or less to the center of the painting which is kind of what I wanted it to do and then from this point on it's just adding that transparent color on top of this and uh, making sure that we're using those purples and blues and keeping your colors really on the cool side on off to the left and and then as you move toward the light source I'm using more warm colors uh, because you're going to be reflecting more of that light from from the uh, sun that's setting out off in the distance and I apologize my camera got a little bit off uh, focus here so it's not quite as focused as it should be but I'll get that resolved here pretty soon but uh, really that's kind of the process here um, getting this in here and kind of refining it so now it's kind of a matter of stepping back and I can look at the painting as a whole and see where I want to kind of improve it I wanted to get a little more color from the sun reflected into the water so I'm just going into my yellows and my oranges and kind of adding that in and um, making a little bolder the uh, the streak of light right down the center so that the eye can really kind of flow toward the center of the painting and uh, gonna have some reflection from from the windows kind of into the ocean as well and uh, gonna paint in a little um, little lamp right here this is just a little bitty lamp a little bit of light uh, so that way when it's dark we can still see the dock pretty well now I've come back this is where I've switched to my oil palette so I'm using my my oil paints I've got them very very thick now and I'm using my palette knife to add those thick little little uh, blobs of paint to kind of represent um, all the individual leafing now and this will really help to really really um, distinguish the, the these trees and uh, really make them pop uh, so I really wanted that to come out kind of come out nice and thick um, and create a little more separation and depth into the painting so I'll just go through on all the shrubs and and all the trees and kind of add all this in well we're getting kind of to the end of the painting now and I appreciate you uh, tuning in Hopefully uh, this was something helpful for you, and um, hopefully you can uh, subscribe to, to my channel. I appreciate uh, your support. Please keep bringing in your comments, and uh, if there's something you'd like to see, please, please let me know, and I'll be happy to try to make a future video out of some of your suggestions. So thanks so much uh, for tuning in. Until next time.